Sixth grade. Um, I was 12 years old. It was, it was uh, February of 2000, and um, my aunt, who I was just telling you guys about, she ended up passing away. Um, and she was young. She was only 38 years old. And up until this point in my life, nothing had really gone wrong. Um, like I said, I had all these good people around me and things like that. And it was almost like it didn't matter if there was like an atomic bomb outside of my house. It was like I was in this little fishbowl, right? And nothing could touch me. But the day that my aunt died. I specifically remember thinking that it felt like somebody had taken that little fishbowl and just kind of tossed it aside. And about two weeks after my aunt passed away, I decided to do something about it. And that was I went out and I bought my very first bag of weed. And I brought that bag of weed home and I smoked weed for the very first time completely by myself. children, I will not do this. No, fuck this. Come on. Anymore. You know what? Fuck you. And I brought that bag of weed home and I smoked weed for the very first time completely by myself. Um, and it didn't um, make me feel better right away. And it didn't make me turn into a guy who was stealing things from my parents right away. But it, all it did was it kind of like introduced me to that new way of thinking. And that way of thinking was, well, if something hurts, 
Or if I don't know how to deal with something, maybe I'll just get high and maybe it'll make it just a little bit easier. And I took that idea and I kind of ran with it for the next couple of years. If something mediocre happened, I got high so it would become a little bit better. Every emotion that was thrown my way, I got high so that I could deal with it. So eighth grade finishes up, I move into high school. A little bit before my finals freshman year in high school, I was introduced to this pill called Adderall. How many people have ever heard of Adderall? How many people have ever heard of Adderall? A couple of years ago, when I first got started, me and some junkie friends were talking about withdrawal and what it feels like. I didn't even know what that word meant. Well, turns out, now I know what that word means. Have you ever felt like you're drowning? When you're wide awake, the sun is shining, you're fucking drowning. Not just drowning, you know, when you're at the bottom of the pool, when you're trying to get up for air, and you feel that little sting at the bottom of your lungs, like fucking bricks tied to your feet at the bottom of the fucking pool. And not just any pool, the pool behind where your parents live, the one where they could find you in, the one they could find your lifeless body floating in, the one where they couldn't save you, that one. That's what it feels like. And the most fucked up part of it is the only way that I know how to breathe is to you. Just one more time. So I took that next step, and that was I got into my parents' car, I drove myself to my drug dealer's apartment, and I picked up my very first bag of methamphetamines. Um, I drove home and I smoked meth for the very first time completely by myself when I was 17 years old. I can specifically remember taking that first hit, and I can specifically remember making a conscious decision that no matter what happened, no matter who got in my way, no matter who I had to hurt, no matter what I had to do, I was gonna do whatever I had to in order to get high again. Within a month of getting high for the first time, I had gotten myself kicked out of my parents' house. I had completely destroyed anything that I had ever had with them. After living behind a McDonald's for about four weeks, I ended up moving in with my drug dealer. A 17-year-old kid walked in the door. Uh, the 17-year-old kid and my drug dealer started arguing with each other, and everything started to escalate a little bit more, until I saw my drug dealer reach into the back of his pants. I looked down and I heard one of the loudest noises I've ever heard. I looked up and the 17 year old kid was laying on the floor. I ran into my parents' house, I basically hit my knees and I said, I need a place to stay. I spent the next week doing everything that I possibly could in order to not get high. And the only person that was standing in my way from that goal was myself. And I was crying. And I didn't know why. And then I started to think, and I was facing one of the biggest decisions in my life. And it was, it was simple. It was, get help or keep getting high. I didn't know how to not get high anymore. Sunday, May 29th of 2005, I woke up that morning and instead of getting high, I got into an airplane and I flew 1,500 miles away from everything that I ever known to a place called Marion, Montana, where I spent 60 days in an inpatient treatment center. And that day, I made the decision that no matter what happened, no matter who got in my way, no matter what I had to do, I was gonna do whatever I had to in order to not get high. Um, and I took that idea and I ran with it. And that kind of brings me to the end of my story um, with a challenge, a little bit. And that is to think of life as just a bunch of decisions. Um, whether it's should I open the door for this person or should I not? Or whether it's should I get high for the first time or not? Just think about that and just think that all of us have um, the ability to change our lives, whether it's for good or for bad. Think about that today. Hearts out for you. The skyscrapers hold me and show me the truth, but I'm